Good morning and welcome to another session of Tuesday Tour Facebook Live. Uh, coming to you from the campus today, John Sauter along with April Holeider behind the camera. And we're glad to uh, bring you this uh, report from inside today. Uh, we're actually inside the Wiley Dining Court. So as you have a glance outside, you can see we're across from the Co-Rec on Martin Jiski Drive, formerly Intermural Drive. Um, I can tell you it's 9 degrees out there today. Classes may be canceled tomorrow, they're not sure. But the one number we're talking about today is number 17. The boilers are ranked number 17 in the poll that just came out yesterday. Great win over Michigan State. Adrian and I are big fans. So I just have to throw that in as we begin this session today. We're in Wiley Dining Court. So we're going to talk about the new dining courts that they have uh, on campus. Wiley being the newest of the dining courts. Uh, the Wiley Dining Court actually opened up in 2008, and let me show you a nice picture, a nice warm picture. This is the dedication that they had back in October of 2008 with Kerry Glebe, Sarah Johnson, who is really the mastermind and driving force behind our new dining courts, Morgan Olson, the Chief Financial Officer, France Cordova, our President, myself, Barb Brazy, Connie Casper Brophy, she was the manager of Wiley Hall next door, on this memorable day just right outside as we opened up the dining court. So today we're going to talk about this new dining court and kind of relive the good old days of the old dining courts and kind of what got us to this particular uh, area, this particular level of dining service on campus. Award winning, I might point out. And so uh, stick with us as we work our way in. April, I'll let you go first. <clears throat> we're going to work our way just a little bit like Disney here as we go through the, uh, the ropes. Our way into the dining court. It's for breakfast. It's breakfast, obviously, and not many students are here. <coughs> so as we get in, we see our friend Jackie. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jackie. Mm -hmm. There are lots of ways to get into the dining court these days. There's as many as six or seven different payment methods, from cash to credit cards to debit cards to dining dollars to all the different meal plans they have, Boiler Express, lots of ways to get in here. You can come and have breakfast here. I can think I can tell you now it's $8.03 would be the uh, price for the all-you-can-eat breakfast. You might want to think about it. A lot of folks in the community do. Uh, a couple of new things, and then we'll pause just a second. But at the entrance way, we, now we always have uh, the items that are being served displayed. We have found that men in particular like visual displays. Women like to read the words somewhat, but the men like the displays. A couple of highlights. One is the waffle we have. They actually have the logo, the 150 Years of Giant Leaps logo in the waffle. If that's not up to date and classy, I'm not sure what is. Um, here in the dining car. So beautiful facility, beautiful facility with terrazzo floors, vaulted ceilings, just a lot of uh, uh, decorations. You can sit here in different eating spaces six or seven different times and have six or seven different eating experiences in the dining courts, a far cry from the way it used to be. Let me share another picture and talk about what at the time we called the good old days. So here's the men's residence hall. I think it's probably Wiley Hall. And you can see the men going through and this sells you several things. This is a dinner meal. The, the men are dressed up in suits and ties, going through the stainless steel serving line. And the waiters, the help, the students, are wearing waiter jackets. Those beautiful, sometimes white, gold Nehru jackets were my favorite uh, that they wore when they were on duty as, as a waiter. Yes. Eric Newland chimed in and said, hi, Mom. Eric <laughs> <laughs> Newland, good to have you with us. Um, those days when we had 20 meals a week, plan every all served the same item at the same time, and you had to eat in your home. This is the, I'm talking now about the 40s, 50s, 60s, even into the 70s. Um, uh, so everybody had the same item at the same time. If you had a boyfriend or a girlfriend in another home, initially that wasn't allowed. Eventually, we made a big move. We allowed 25 people to go to another hall to eat because it would throw our counts off and that sort of thing. Uh, food was regulated, so you could have one entree, um, one vegetable, one dessert, mind you, that was it. And initially, a couple glasses of milk, and that was it. That was it. Because we had to highly regulate the food, which was brought to us by food stores, 
Now food is delivered to each home. So many different suppliers close by that trucks come in every day supplying food. So it's all, all better. And that's what we really want to talk about uh, today in this real award-winning dining uh, f facility that we have. Uh, these days they're serving about three and a half million meals uh, uh, in very attractive facilities uh, with good that attracts faculty, staff, students, people from the community, construction workers, they all come in. Let's, so let's look around a little bit at what some of those differences are. This is the dining court, and you can see up here, Churrascaria. This is a Brazilian barbecue approach, meat you can eat. All the items are unlimited. And so we can see the Churrascaria, they have spits going. This is one of the largest in the country. There's only two or three other facilities uh, on campus in the facility that have that many, in this case, chicken legs, it looks like. And there's some sausage, some Polish sausage, maybe off to the left. And that'll be served here uh, as we get into lunch and, and to dinner items. Very popular, all the protein. This is probably one of the most popular uh, spots. 500 seats in this particular dining facility. Um, uh, and they go through the seating quite a bit uh, with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We'll make our way through here now. You see plenty. We don't have tray anymore. Remember in the good old days when you had a tray to bring? Now you pick up an individual plate uh, along with silver and napkins are on the table and you, so, and you go and fill up your plate individually. Specialty items probably for dinner. Quite often they'll have steak night every other week. Sometimes we'll have Korean shark, shrimp. They really have uh, kind of high-end items for the students because our students are very are sophisticated eaters these days. We look here, we actually have a, a counter service. So if you come in by yourself, you can actually sit on the counter. Um, high top tables over here. Here we have booths. Here we have other high top tables and chairs. So again, a different eating experience depending where you choose to, to sit. Now we get to the area where they're having uh, um, make your own, uh, create your own omelets. So you can have your omelets made to order. Uh, during lunch and dinner, this will be make your own uh, uh, stir fry. They'll have create your own stir fry that they can do uh, right here for you. Hi. I want to point out one of our dining rooms, our reservable dining rooms. We actually have a meeting taking place here. They're executive in the residence dining room featuring Tim Bach. Uh, an executive in the past, but we really want to highlight this particular dining room. They know we're coming, so excuse us. We want to make our way to this plaque right over here. Excuse me, excuse me. Hello, say hello to everybody. Hello, hello. Hi. There we go. <laughs> we appreciate you allowing us to interrupt us. But we want to highlight the bill burner. Bill Burner, first of all, was part of my interview process. Uh, when I first came back to Purdue in the 60s or so, he was one of the people that interviewed me. Claire, or Bill, just an excellent man, and his wife Claire, and his uh, three daughters, uh, Lynn, Chris, and Beth, just beautiful people. Bill was on the campus in the days when he was interviewed, be here by Jack Smalley. His wife was actually interviewed also. Those were the days where couples were actually hired because you were expected to interact with the students in dinner dances and formal get-togethers. When we first got here, you bought a tuxedo because you were expected to go to these very, very formal back in those days. Bill Berner was an associate director. He affectionately became known as our space man because he kept track of every space, every bed in our residence hall system of about 10,000 at the time had its own little card so he could track each bed by the card. He taught me, he was a mentor and he taught me as a manager of a hall, I managed Harrison Hall for six years. He said he expected you to have your paperwork done by about 10, 30, 11 in the morning so you could sit out in the lobby and have lunch with the students for the rest of the day to get to know the students. So he therefore knew more students uh, by sight and by name than, than many folks. Those were the good old days when you had less paperwork, less meetings where you could do that sort of thing. Yes? Katie chimed in and said that uh, we had your retirement party at Wiley. Yes, we did. <laughs> yes, good memory. Right outside here, yeah, we had our, my retirement party in this facility. Um, uh, and we're glad to ded dedicate this particular facility, this particular reservable room to that. And here we have visitor Tim Bach, former student, former counselor. Hello. 
our executive and residents spending a few days here interacting with students and we appreciate so much you being able, being able to be interrupted and so you can say hello to your friends out there <laughs> thank you see you at lunch tomorrow okay that was fun <laughs> now we make our way uh, past the burner dining room past Romeo and Parmigiana great names of our different areas this is where the pizzas will be available come lunchtime. They're already working on those. So I want to talk a little bit about how we got to this point. Uh, we realized in the early 90s or so, students were changing and we had to change to keep up with them. And so as much as we like 20 meals a week, master plan, that was kind of easier to do. Uh, students really to be able to interact with each other a lot better. So first of all, we came up with a system that they could go from one hall to another. So actually were the driving force behind the modern day university ID card that has a magnetic strip on it. So you could actually swipe the card and they could keep track of where you were. Otherwise, you may recall a little board card with a number on it. Somebody at the door they had to mark off that number as you came in the door. We needed to have a more flexible system. I remember meeting with Comptroller at the time, Laverne Canodal, saying, Laverne, we've got to change the system. We'll hit it. And that, that was kind of the beginning of the movement between all the halls. But in the early 90s, mastermind Sarah Johnson and her committee really looking at students and national trends. The marketplace concept was becoming popular at malls and airports. We had to get away from the cafeteria, the stainless steel feel of, of, of uh, institutional dining. And so that's what they pursued. We all found in the 90s less students were working because more were on scholarships and they wanted to uh, make sure they went to class. Um, uh, but the big favor was students were becoming much more sophisticated consumers of food. They didn't mind going to destination food choices because they had been raised on fast food. They were, they were expecting efficiency because they went through a drive through line and they had service in three minutes or less. And it was evolving. Students mainly wanted three things. They wanted items to be fresh. They wanted lots of choices and they like seeing the items made in front of them, which is why most of our food preparation these days is actually out here, right behind the counter. You can see the pizzas being made. Our kitchen here is actually quite small. It's a food preparation area so students could actually see it being prepared. Then we had to figure out, would the students give up convenience of being in their own residence hall to maybe go next door and get the food item they wanted? And after lots of marketing, research, and studies, sure enough, Students wouldn't mind going two buildings away from where they were to get the food item they wanted. And so that told us we needed a neighborhood concept. And so we needed neighborhood dining courts like this, a freestanding court, each unique in its architecture, each unique in its serving. So the churrascaria here, the Brazilian barbecue, the meat, uh, that's the unique feature here. Ford Dining Court, our very first one, uh, has pizzas as its feature. They go through hundreds of pizzas a day. Uh, and on and on it goes with each of our dining courts. Um, these are all awarding, I can tell you, from Food, Se Fruit Se Food Service Director Magazine next month. We'll be naming uh, this operation as the top in the country. Um, uh, uh, Business Insider has recognized the Purdue Dining Service as one of the top 20 in the country. NACA, the National Association of College and University Food Services, have recognized Purdue. We get visitors in from many schools across the country. So we're really proud of these dining courts, perhaps as you can tell. And so this was the last of the five that opened in 2008. So we'll go a little bit further. Nice artwork and a different kind of setting again if you want to sit in this kind of an area. And here are classic favorites. So for regular meals, for dinner meals, we may have meat, meatloaf, mashed potatoes. Here today we have uh, uh, scrambled eggs and hash browns. You can't beat having we have oatmeal. All the different items that you might want are here. And here we have some sandwiches, breakfast sandwiches. We'll point out over here the different beverage areas. We're now up to serving as many as a dozen different beverages. Quite a change, quite a change from what that milk uh, in those days. Here are the waters. You saw the finished product. Here's the 150th Giant Leaps, and there's actually the the Boilermaker Special logo on our waffle makers, fresh waffles. You can't beat them with fresh fruit. Excellent location for that. 
fresh tastes are located here. This is our answer to Subway sandwiches. And then we have a salad bar over here uh, available also. Dish return in the tray accumulator. As much as we paid for these, we now call them tray accumulators, not the return belt anymore. But this is where they put their dishes. Here we have another counter area uh, for sitting by yourself if you prefer that. Here we have tables, but it's carpeted, so it gives a different feel, a little bit of a quieter. This is April's favorite area, I think, because it's beautiful, vaulted ceiling, and, and we go out to Wiley to the north. This is a gorgeous area right here. Here approaching the third area, and you can see a little twice available in, in this area. For the for the student uh, with ice cream, hand dipped ice cream uh, is now available. Uh, we don't have soft serve machines anymore, much to April's chagrin, I might point out. Um, but with hand dipped ice cream, it kind of fulfilled the need for that. Of course, we have cereal. Cereal at all meals are available. Students is kind of like cereal and peanut butter and jelly. We make sure we have those for the students who uh, might not find something they like in particular. This is a nice corner area that we set aside. It has booths and TVs. Originally, this was going to be kind of a sports bar where you could actually dial up individual screens on your tables and that sort of thing. But ultimately, the budget, we didn't quite get there with this one. So, uh, it's not quite as at high level that we thought it might be. So we're near the end with uh, more beverages that are available. And we even have, people ask me to point out, we actually have all the milk, soy milk available for allergies, which gets us into allergies these days. Lots of allergies with gluten-free items and peanut, peanut oil and all those things. We have our own allergists who are happy to talk to students. In fact, we've got an excellent website. It's dining.purdue.edu. You go to that site, you click on the hall, you click on a menu, you click on an item, and it actually gives you nutrition information for each item on the menu. We actually have net nutrition, where you can actually put the items in that you plan to eat for that meal, and it'll give you a breakdown of the nutrition value for all those individual items. So we have certainly come a long way from the 60s, cooking for dinner in stainless steel, uh, servery areas, to these beautiful facilities. But again, recognized as one of the top in the country. And it is available for guests. We encourage you to stop in. Feel if you visit your son or daughter, have them bring you to one of our dining courts and enjoy the meals. It's uh, kind of what makes uh, makes us proud and makes Purdue what it is today. So, um, with conclude our cold presentation today, and uh, hope that you enjoyed it and warmed you up just a little bit. And we'll look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Care and hail Purdue.